How about this? Can you hear anything now? Anything now? Still nothing. Still nothing. Allie, can you hear me? I'm Betsy, Betsy Amsray says, yay sound. Anything now? Is there yes? Somebody saying yes. I can hear now. Okay. Incoming answer. Yeah. So. Um, okay. 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 They can hear now. Okay. I, thanks. Thank you, Ali. Oh, bye. Well, it's not what we'd hoped for. <laughs> It's time for Mr. Bean. It's not what we'd hoped for. It's 10.03. Oh, let's have a prelude, Charles, shall we? You don't want to do any announcements? No? Hmm. Uh, shall I, I do announcements after we have your attention with your... Okay. Yeah. <laughs> Hopefully they'll hear something. One hopes. Church and all those who may be tuning in uh, from other places. I'm Nick Morris, the director here, and it's a delight to welcome all of you here to this uh, virtual morning prayer service. Apologies for the sound. Um, I've been working to become a sound expert over the last couple of weeks and bought a new mixer that I thought would be working. It seemed to work in test runs, but not in actuality. So I hope you can hear what you need to hear uh, that will make your worship meaningful this morning. Um, just a couple of announcements before we continue with the service while I've got you. Uh, first, thank uh, you all for um, your, um, your Easter gifts. We've had a really wonderful response. And for those of you who are also to able to keep pledging, thank you. And also, good news, uh, we've learned that we are, have been approved for our loan for, uh, from the federal government, the Payment Protection Plan loan. Also want to thank Charles, uh, who you can't see and Mark, who you can see, for helping us to lead worship this morning. After worship, we will also have a Zoom coffee hour, and uh, those codes are in the e-blast that, uh, that Christ Church members receive. Um, and I'd like us to remember uh, that even though we're separated by space, we're together in the Spirit, and I thank you for being here this morning to uh, help us remember that, that we worship a God who transcends time and space and even transcends coronavirus. So I invite you to take out your bulletin, and we'll begin morning prayer. Lord, open our lips, and our mouth shall proclaim your praise. Praise to the Father, and to the and Son, to the Son, and to the Holy, Holy Spirit, Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. Alleluia. Alleluia, the Lord is risen indeed. Come, let us adore him. Alleluia. We continue uh, praying with the 
Christ our Passover, which we pray responsibly, breaking at the Aster. Alleluia, Christ our Passover has been sacrificed for us. Therefore, let us keep the feast, not with the old leaven, the leaven of malice and evil, but with the unleavened bread of sincerity and truth. Alleluia. Christ, being raised from the dead, will never die again. Death no longer has dominion over him. The death that he died, he died to sin, once for all. But the life he lives, he lives to God. So also consider yourselves dead to sin. And alive to God in Jesus Christ our Lord. Alleluia. Christ has been raised from the dead. The first fruits of those who have fallen asleep. For since by a man came death, by a man has come also the resurrection of the dead. For as in Adam all die, and also in Christ shall all be made alive. Alleluia. Now seated for the song. The song for the morning is Psalm 16, and we will read it responsibly, breaking at the asterisk. Protect me, O Lord, for I take refuge in you. I have said to the Lord, you are my Lord, my good above all, all other. All my delight is on the goodly, godly that are in the land. Upon those who are noble among people. But those who run after other gods shall, shall have, have their troubles multiplied. Their libations of blood I will not offer. Nor take the names, names of their gods upon my lips. O Lord, you are my portion and my cup. It is you who uphold my lot. My boundaries enclose a pleasant land. Indeed, I have a godly heritage. I will bless the Lord who gives me counsel. My heart, my heart teaches me night after night. I have set the Lord always before me. Because, because he is at my right hand, hand, I shall not fall. My heart, therefore, is glad, and my spirit rejoices. My body also shall rest in hope. For you will not abandon me to the grave, nor let your holy ones see the pit. You will show me the path of life. In your presence there is fullness of joy, and in your right hand are pleasures forevermore. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. The first lesson is from the book of Acts, um, second book, uh, verse 14a, chapter 14a, verses 22 through 32. Peter, standing with the eleven, raised his voice and addressed the crowd. You that are Israelites, listen to what I have to say. Jesus of Nazareth, a man attested by you, but to you by God with deeds of power, wonders, and signs that God did through him among you, as you yourselves know, this man handed over to you, according to the definite plan and foreknowledge of God, you crucified and killed by the hands of those outside the wall. But God raised him up, having freed him from death, because it was impossible for him to be held in its power. For David says concerning him, I saw the law, Lord, always before me, for he is at my right hand, so that I shall not be shaken. Therefore my heart was glad, and my tongue rejoiced. Moreover my flesh will live in hope, for you will not abandon my soul to Hades, or let your Holy One experience corruption. You have made known to me the ways of life, you will make me full of gladness with your presence. Fellow Israelites, I say to you confidently of our ancestor David that he both died and was buried, and his tomb is with us to this day. Since he was a prophet, he knew that God had sworn an oath to him that he would, be put, that he would put one of his descendants on the throne. Foreseeing this, David spoke of the resurrection of the Messiah, saying, He was not abandoned to Hades, nor did his flesh experience corruption. This Jesus God raised up, 
and all that are with us, and all that this Jesus God raised up, and of that all of us are witnesses. Hear what the Spirit is saying to God's people. Thanks, Thanks be to God. God. In response to the Acts reading with the first song of Isaiah, found in your bulletin, and we break at the after. Surely it is God who saves me. I will trust in him and not be afraid. For the Lord is my stronghold and my sure defense. And, and he will be my Savior. Therefore you shall draw water with rejoicing from the from springs, springs of salvation. And on that day you shall say, Give, Give thanks, thanks to the Lord and call on his name. his name. Make his deeds known among the peoples. See that they remember that his name is exalted. Sing the praises of the Lord, for he has done great things. And, and this is known in all the world. Cry aloud, inhabitants of Zion, ring out your joy. For the, the great, great one in the midst of you is the Holy One of Israel. Israel. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit. As, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. I invite you now to put your singing voice on and join in singing hymn 209, found in your bulletin. where the disciples had met were locked for the fear of the Jewish authorities. Jesus came and stood among them and said, Peace be with you. After he said this, he showed them his hands and his side. Then the disciples rejoiced when they saw the Lord, and Jesus said to them again, Peace be with you. As the Father has sent me, so I send you. When he had said this, he breathed on them and said to them, Receive the Holy Spirit. If you forgive the sins of any, they are forgiven them. If you retain the sins of any, they are retained. But Thomas, who was called the twin, one of the twelve, was not with them when Jesus came. So the other disciples told him, We have seen the Lord. But he said to them, Unless I see the mark of the nails in his hands, and put my finger in the mark of the nails and my hand in his side, I will not believe. A week later, his disciples were again in the house, and Thomas was with them. Although the doors were shut, 
Jesus came and stood among them and said, Peace be with you. Then he said to Thomas, Put your finger here and see my hands. Reach out your hand and put it in my side. Do not doubt, but believe. Thomas answered him, My Lord and my God. Jesus said to him, Have you believed because you have seen me? Blessed are those who have not seen and yet have come to believe. Now Jesus did many other signs in the presence of his disciples, which are not written in this book. But these are written so that you, that you may come to believe that Jesus is the Messiah, the Son of God, and that through believing you may have life in his name. Hear what the Spirit is saying to God's people. Thanks, Thanks be to God. God. O oh Lord, may the words of my mouth and the meditations of all our hearts be always acceptable in your sight, our rock and our redeemer. Amen. Alleluia, Christ is risen. The, the Lord, Lord is, is risen indeed. Alleluia. Welcome back. I'm so glad you're here this morning, and I hope that wherever you are and are watching this, that you're safe and healthy and that those whom you love are safe and healthy. I'm really glad you got out of bed this morning, or maybe you're still in bed, I don't know. Uh, maybe you're still in your pajamas. But in any case, you're joining us this morning for worship. Alleluia, Christ is risen. The Lord, the Lord is, is risen, risen indeed. indeed. Alleluia. You may remember that last Sunday, dressed in our Easter finest, or maybe not, I know that some of you were, because I saw you on Zoom. Last Sunday, many of us came to church by watching our computers or listening in on Zoom. And many of us felt God's presence mightily in the lovingly knit together garments of prayer and praise, of music and song, of word and sacrament, offered from the sacred spaces here at Christ Church and from the homes of lectors, intercessors and musicians from Norwood to Salem, from Needham to Dedham, from Waltham to Middleborough. We gathered for worship from Sarasota to Tucson, from Needham to Brattleboro, and from Dedham to Cambridge, England. We felt burdens lifted, at least for a little while. We gained hope for the future, at least perhaps for a moment. We felt some healing, at least temporarily. We felt reconnected with God, some way, somehow, and we felt wonder that this could even happen at all. In some way, the resurrection was real to us. Maybe, maybe as a historical fact, maybe as a renewal of our faith, maybe as a sense of being reconnected to Jesus Christ and reconnected to the community of the faithful, our friends and fellow worshipers and those who we may not even know together. And then, Monday morning, and Tuesday, and Wednesday, the guidelines for social distancing still in effect, cases and deaths still rising in the Commonwealth, decisions about what news to pay attention to still there, Schools, senior centers, Starbucks, still closed. Jobs uncertain, jobs in jeopardy, jobs lost. Future uncertain, political gamesmanship, loved ones still sick or dying or dead, still alone. Bills still to be paid. Tight family quarters and chores still to be negotiated. Children, parents, spouses, and other strenuous and wonderful and life-giving relationships to be tended to either too close for comfort or too far to comfort. Unexpected gifts of time and intimacy with friends and family and co-workers to be discovered, savored, nurtured. My experience at this time has been that it intensifies 
whatever dynamics may be already at work in our lives. And yesterday, snow? Are you kidding? In short, business as usual in what has become the new normal, which still feels anything but. But in the scripture we hear today, we are reminded that for the first disciples, the resurrection meant just the opposite of business as usual. The reading from the Acts of the Apostles this morning that Mark read to us tells the story. The fearful, unreliable, ragtag band of disciples seems to turn into a group of preachers and teachers. They're not cowed by jail or police or religious authorities. They are so changed by their experience of Jesus after his death that they can no longer remain silent about his power, even when faced with persecution. As Peter, as if Peter would explode if he did not declare, this Jesus, God raised up, and of that all of us are witnesses. And yet, as we hear the gospel reading this morning, we may stand more with Thomas, who needs a certain kind of proof before he can trust that Jesus and his power remain alive. Now, for the record, I should say uh, that I have come to trust in a physical, historical resurrection, that Jesus came back to life in a new kind of body. I don't understand why you and I can't see that body now. That's a mystery to me. Yet I also know enough about modern physics to know what we think we understand about the physical world, about how the physical world works, is not always the way things actually are. For example, I'm told that physics tells us that there was more space in the matter of this music stand than there is matter. There's more space than matter right here. And just because science can't replicate it doesn't mean it couldn't have happened. I know enough about history that the resurrection is about as well attested to as other events in ancient history that modern people accept as fact. And history, by definition, is the study of things that only happen once. Wherever you are on this question is completely okay. But in the interest of full disclosure, you should know where your preacher stands. Having said that, many of us lack the certainty, the immediacy of the presence of the resurrected Christ that we yearn for. I know that I often do miss it. Some time back, I read a short excerpt from a book called Practicing Resurrection. The author escapes me at the moment. I'll have it in my uh, typed copy that's posted on the website. But anyway, the author describes a friend's experience in church during the Advent season. And the preacher asks the congregation, what would you like for Christmas? The friend thought this was kind of a silly question initially, but as she began to ponder it, she decided that she wanted to stand up and shout back to the preacher, I'd really like to believe in the resurrection. It's a big question for many of us. Where is the power of God for me and for us in this world that seems to have gone crazy? Practicing resurrection. In a significant way, we practice resurrection every Sunday, whether we realize it or not, simply by gathering here, right now, in front of your tablet or phone or computer or listening on your telephone. Whether we feel like being here or not, when we could just as easily, easily have slept in or watched another funny pet trick gif on the web or read the paper, we offer ourselves by gathering here we offer ourselves to the resurrected Jesus, who is present here in the community, in our songs and in our silence, in our prayers and in scripture, perhaps even in this homily, for sure in the fellowship in cyberspace, in the outreach to one another, when we show up like Thomas does, we place ourselves in the position to experience Jesus. Like Thomas, 
We keep gathering with other people who believe or want to believe or who have decided at least for today to live like we believe, to live like we have been witnesses to the resurrection so that we may offer that resurrection life to others. As the line in the Nicene Creed puts it, we look for the resurrection of the dead. Being here now is a start. But practicing resurrection only starts on Sundays. How do we keep it going the rest of the week in such a way that we can say with the psalmist, you are my Lord, my good above all others. A number of lengths ago, I had the wonderful experience of spending some Wednesday, Wednesday evenings with uh, a number of Christ Church families. And we gathered in the evening for a simple meal, and then Bible study and prayer on a particular theme, which we would try to put into practice during the week. And one of our themes was watch. Our job was to practice God sighting, a place where we saw or heard or felt holiness breaking through in our ordinary days, and then to report back to the group. People spoke about the breeze in their faces while running, the love of a parent, the glint of sunlight in a certain angle in their office, the love of a pet, the kindness of a friend, all these and more were signs of God's presence. I think that this is practice of resurrection. I know I've been helped practicing resurrection over these last couple of weeks by the other faithful participants in a morning prayer conference call sponsored each day, each weekday by our cathedral at 8.30, Monday through Friday. I'm not too proud to say that sometimes that prayer call is what gets me out of bed in the morning. It helps me to practice resurrection. We can practice resurrection by contributing what we can to help people in our lives who are desperate, who are in desperate straits during this time of separation and economic slowdown. I'm thinking, for example, of our MANA brothers and sisters, the MANA community, and our cathedral. Our cathedral is one of the few places that are providing food and water and shelter for the unhoused in Boston. Our own Jennifer McCracken is on the front lines ministering to their needs, a contribution sent to the cathedral in any amount marked manna ministry. That's practicing resurrection. The ministries that are continuing in this congregation, that's practicing resurrection. The healthcare professionals throughout uh, our country and around the world who are practicing life saving, that's practicing resurrection. The unseen men and women who are delivering packages. That's practicing resurrection. I could go on, and I know you can too. All of these experiences that we see and hear and read about in our lives, the focus on those is practicing resurrection. Especially when we love Jesus in the face of the other in our circumstances. When we practice these resurrection ways of being, we make him real. We're not conjuring him. He's here, but we need practice to see him. It's kind of like that thing that we used to do, many of us, when we were young. We make ink out of lemon juice and write secret messages to one another. And then when we apply the light to the page, the writing becomes clear. When we apply the love of God to our neighbor, the resurrection of Jesus becomes real. And what I say to that is, Alleluia, Christ is risen. The Lord, the Lord is, is risen, risen indeed. Alleluia. Alleluia. Stand or find yourself in whatever position is comfortable. 
and join in a saying the Nicene Creed, a statement of faith. I believe in God, the Father of the Almighty, creator of heaven and earth, of all humanity, Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day he rose again. He ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. We continue with the prayer. Hear our cry, O God, and listen, listen to Lord. our prayer. Let us pray. Our, our Father, who art in heaven, heaven hallowed, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Let us pray together the prayers of the people. We hold up before you our presiding Bishop Michael, our Bishops Alan and Gail, the Dean of our Cathedral, Amy, Carol, our Regional Canon, Nick, our priests, our priest, and all bishops, priests, deacons, and lay ministers. Help us, O God, our Savior. Deliver us and forgive us our sins. We lift up before you our siblings at St. Luke's in La Zille, Haiti, and our siblings at the Manor Cathedral, at our cathedral. Look upon your congregation, give to your people the blessing of peace. We remember before you Donald, our president, Charlie, our governor, and pray for wisdom for all public officials in these days of the coronavirus. Declare your glory among the nations and your, and your wonders, wonders among all peoples. We give thanks for the invisible women and men who are holding us together. Do not let the oppressed be shamed and turned away. Never, Never forget, forget the lives of your poor. We give you thanks for medical workers in all places and pray for comfort for those who suffer and die unattended. Continue your loving kindness to those who know you. And have your favor to those who are true of heart. Satisfy us by your loving kindness in the morning. So, so shall, shall we rejoice and be glad all the days. days of our life. Almighty and everlasting God, who in the Paschal Mystery established the new covenant of reconciliation, grant that all who have been reborn into the fellowship of Christ's body may show forth in their lives what they profess by their faith. Through Jesus Christ our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. O God, who made us in your own image and redeemed us through Jesus your Son, look with compassion on the whole human family. Take away the arrogance and hatred which infect our hearts. Break down the walls that separate us. Unite us in bonds of love and work through our struggle and confusion to accomplish your purposes on earth, that in your good time, all nations and races may serve you in harmony around your heavenly throne. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. O God, you have made of one blood all the peoples of the earth, and sent your blessed Son to preach peace to those who are far off and to those who are near, Grant that people everywhere may seek after you and find you. Bring the nations into your fold. Pour out your spirit upon all flesh and hasten the coming of your kingdom. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen.
I invite you to offer now uh, in the silence uh, of your own home uh, or aloud uh, any prayers and thanksgivings that you may have. You can also offer them on uh, the chat feature on Facebook to lift them up to God and share them with one another. And I'll be silent for a few seconds, five or ten seconds while we do that. We thank the National Guard as they go in and test places, people that need to be tested. We give thanks for our Orthodox sisters and brothers as they celebrate their Easter. I invite you to join with me in praying the general thanksgiving found in the bulletin. Almighty God, Father, Father of all mercies, we, we your worthy servants, servants give you humble thanks for all your goodness, goodness and loving and kindness to us and to all, all whom you have made. We, we bless you for our creation, preservation, and all the blessings of this life, but above all for your immeasurable love in the redemption of the world by our Lord Jesus Christ, for the means of grace and for the hope of glory. And we pray, give us such an awareness of your mercies that with truly thankful hearts we may show forth your praise, not only with our lips, but in our lives, by giving up ourselves to your service, and by walking before you in holiness and righteousness all our days. Through Jesus Christ our Lord, to whom with you and the Holy Spirit be honor and glory throughout all ages. Amen. Almighty God, you have given us grace at this time with one accord to make our common supplication to you. And you have promised through your well-beloved Son that when two or three are gathered together in his name, you will be in the midst of them. Fulfill now, O God, our desires and petitions as may be best for us, granting us in this world the knowledge of your truth, and in the age to come, life everlasting. Amen. Let us bless the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be to God. God. I invite you to join your voice and sing with gusto verses 1, 2, and 5 of The Strife is Over, found in your bulletin. before going to Zoom coffee up. 